Hello, and welcome to the Curated Beauty Podcast. I'm Jessica Christie, CEO of Beauty Culture Med Spa and the founder of the new functional and regenerative business, Cultured Wellness. From my start as a physician assistant to now not only being a practitioner, but leading my own businesses, I've been on a unique journey through health, beauty, and entrepreneurship. Join us as we explore everything from skincare secrets to leadership lessons. Whether you're passionate about beauty or striving to balance life's challenges, this is your space to connect, learn, and shine. Let's dive in. Hello, whether you are here for the first time or I'm welcoming you back to the Curated Beauty Podcast, I am Jessica Christie, your host, and today we are diving into a groundbreaking conversation with Dr. Christopher Shade, the CEO and visionary founder of Quicksilver Scientific. Dr. Shade is a pioneer in health innovation, and he specializes in detoxification and nutritional support. His work includes the development of advanced testing for mercury levels and the creation of supplements that significantly enhance detoxification and overall health. Today, we'll explore Quicksilver's revolutionary new hormone line, which is a must-have for practitioners, but also a game-changer for my patients. And don't think that you have to be menopausal to get some benefit out of this episode. We are looking at any patients who are aiming for optimal health and longevity. Whether you're navigating hormonal changes or simply passionate about health optimization, this episode promises invaluable insights. So I'm so excited. Let's get started. Dr. Christopher Shade, welcome. Thank you, Jessica. I'm very happy to be here. You know, I feel like I'm starstruck with all of the listening that I've done to you on my own car and many car rides and just watching you travel all around and spread the good word of these amazing products. This supplement industry has been around for a long time and has carried itself without a lot of regulation. And it's just amazing to see people like you bringing things to the forefront that not only are helping people get better, but with such a commitment to the formulations and the delivery of things. Can you tell us a little bit about how Quicksilver was born? Yeah, you know, it's a real sort of like a windy path. I grew up in a steel town. I had a mouthful of amalgam, so I was very metal exposed. And Quicksilver is the old word for mercury. It means liquid silver. And so we were originally a metal detox company. And so I started being exposed. Then I became an organic farmer. I was all into like natural health and soil systems. And then I went back to graduate school and I got a degree in global mercury cycling called biogeochemistry. And I patented some testing then for different forms of mercury. And I wanted to bring that into the integrative and functional medicine space. And I did that and, you know, it was very well adopted right away. But when you're testing for something, you also want a solution. And I got very interested in how to turn up the body's ability to take toxins out of the system. You know, what do you need to do this? Because at the time, medicine was acting like the body never detoxifies and you have to take these pharmaceutical chelators to get it out. And I took those chelators and they got me really sick. So I had to figure out, well, what's the body supposed to do. And I developed the system of toxin binders. And then I had to get glutathione into the body because glutathione grabs the metal from the cells and starts this journey out of the body, through the liver, to the GI, or out through the kidneys. That led me to delivery systems, which is what you just mentioned, is the delivery. And even pharmaceutical companies have known for a long time about what they call small molecules. These are like quercetin, resveratrol, curcumin, and how powerful they are for hitting these different triggers in the body. But they say the problem is their solubility and their bioavailability. First, I had to get glutathione into the body and the stomach will break it down. So I got into liposomes and eventually nano emulsions are these tiny little fat bubbles that you put your nutraceutical in. And when you take them into the mouth, if you make them right, you start absorbing them right through the mouth into the capillaries and what you swallow goes through the stomach lining or the upper GI and boom, all of a sudden you're getting all of these compounds into the body, and you go back to the detox, you have to hit different triggers in the cells and the liver and the kidneys to turn up the body's ability to grab a toxin, link something onto it, and start its movement out to the kidneys, into the stool, or out through the liver, into GI, or out to the kidneys. And once you arrange all that, 
everything works really well. And so our first thing was detox, and then we took these delivery systems, moved them into immune, into cardiometabolic. We could put you into ketosis in a half hour, and then we got into hormones. I love that. So many things. My first experience with a lot of that was my son being from Western medicine, but raised by alternative medicine. My son was vaccine injured and through a crazy oh, journey, yeah. we learned that he has the MTHFR, MTHFR. Medication, yep. how important detox was for him. How, like you said, our body knows how to detox, but the beauty yeah. of regenerative medicine and what even aesthetics is becoming is giving your body the things that it needs to do what it knows already how to do. And having something that was oral was so important because you take a kid with ASD and Mm -hmm. try to give them some sort of pill, like good luck getting that down the hatch. Yeah, that was always an issue. We did a ton of work in autism. You know, I was spending back when autism one was really big. I was going there and I was figuring everything out by taking this very difficult end member of the autistic child and has a lot of inflammation, a lot of neuroinflammation. And that keeps them from being able to detox. So how do you calm that down? And how do you create a really effective and efficient detox? And we really (laughs) figured out how to do it by working with autism. That's amazing. We're so, so lucky and so blessed that we were able to find those tools, but it's just so refreshing that there's continual awareness of how to detox properly. Cause you hear like even a friend of mine who's a patient, our patients yeah. are so key on all the phrases. They know the buzzwords of the different supplements, but it's yeah. like, you hear about this all the time, detox, 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 detox. But like, where is this stuff going? Which is why the Quicksilver system of having that addition of phase three of actually yeah. them and eliminating was just such a no brainer for us in terms of picking a supplement line. I was the first one talking about that. And ages ago, Jeff Bland would talk about phase one and phase two hepatic detoxification. And, you know, for the viewers out there, detox has these three phases. And this phase one kind of takes a toxin and makes it a radical actually makes it a little bit more toxic so that in phase two, you can clip glutathione or glucuronic acid or sulfate onto it. You put a tag on it, which makes it recognizable by phase three, which is a transport system out of the body. And we were talking about phase one and two, but not phase three. And we were talking like it all happens in the liver, but it happens everywhere. Just a lot more of it happens in the liver. So once you connect all those things, you get phase one, go into two, go into three and get everything out. And then you have binders in the GI to pick everything up, the detox gets more powerful, but much less symptomatic. Detox was like a code word for like being stuck in the bathroom and having headaches and rashes and all that stuff. And everybody thought, oh God, detox can be horrible, but it doesn't have to be. You should feel better. Yes. You know, I have to tell you, I'm not going to name brands, but there was something that a lot of these biohackers talk about in terms of a senolytic, like take yeah. six pills one day, six pills another day. I can't even tell you. It was an aha moment for me with Quicksilver. I was so ill. Like the Herxheimer, talk about yeah. the high dose quercetin that has you in the bathroom, the headaches. And it wasn't until I stumbled upon all of the e-learning stuff that you guys have as yep. a provider bringing this on, where it was an aha moment where you can get the low dose that's effective and bioavailable to your body without all of these aggressive doses that are really hard for your body to tolerate. Plus yeah. the, this phase three. And then they're not realizing how many other things the quercetin and whether it's feistin and quercetin, luteol and all those things, they're NRF2 upregulators, they're AMPK activators. So yeah, they trigger senolytic activity, autophagic activity, but they're triggering detox activity. And you have to have that all lined up with other things if you're going to do that big dose. But with ours, it all gets in and it all goes back away. And you never have the GI issue of having massive doses of these compounds opening up in these capsules right in areas of the GI and really irritating them. Okay, so I'll tell you how I came to find Quicksilver. And I actually met Carol Peterson, who was elemental in helping develop. She's awesome. Yes, you guys are such a great dynamic duo. I was at a aesthetic conference last year, actually right around this time in Miami. I'm leaving tomorrow for it. (laughs) 
I'm not going this year, but I was there and you know what happens. You fly in late because you're seeing patients, whatever. You yeah. go out to dinner. You're just like not sleeping in your own bed. You're tired. And everyone was, yeah. go get these little shots that they're giving out down in the exhibit hall. So I went over there. They made me a little NAD cocktail. And I got to talk to Carol because the hormones weren't live yet for us yeah. to be able to purchase, which is a new, new thing for providers to be able to purchase yeah. and carry. And I was telling Carol, oh, you know, I tried hormones. I had the Dutch test and all these labs and my symptoms. And they put me on progesterone, which was an oral pill that I took in the second half of my cycle. And I said, there's no quicker way to get a woman to not take hormones anymore and say, this isn't for me. If you make her feel like fat and like pregnant. And and she's like, oh my gosh, you're on the wrong dose. You're probably not on the right form for you. And I was like, okay, okay, you know, we'll see how it goes. And so it's been so interesting to dip our toe back into bioidentical hormone replacement therapy and also just with a brand that has taken all of those reasons of why someone wouldn't tolerate it and put them together. I think the biggest thing that my patients and patients that are curious about having hormone replacement therapy are looking at is even if they don't know it, they are nervous to start because of the women's health initiative the whi study could you talk a little bit about what has happened since that study came out and what it essentially said and it's funny before the women's health initiative there was the nurses study and it was thousands of nurses and it showed nothing but benefits to bioidentical hormones and so a group of academics wanted to put together this women's health initiative and look at the effects of estrogen and progesterone on anywhere from all cause mortality to neurological issues to cardiovascular issues and they didn't take enough time to characterize the groups as to whether they've had hormones before it was just like did you have them in the last year or two but Turned out there were some people who had it before, didn't have them recently. Then they never broke out. People like to think bioidentical and synthetic. That's not actually the right names. It's bioidentical and non-bioidentical because even the bioidentical have been synthesized. The non-bioidenticals are ones that are made that are close to an estrogen, but they have little different groups on them or close to a progesterone, like they're called progestins, but they have other little chemistry on them. And why do they do that? They do that because pharmaceutical companies can't patent the hormones. And so they have to make something they can patent. And they make something that works even stronger on estrogen receptor than estrogen does. And there ended up being a lot of negative effects of those. So they didn't segregate really who had had hormones and who hadn't. They weren't separating the non-bioidentical from the bioidentical. They weren't separating smoking from non-smoking. There was a whole bunch of stuff they didn't do. So they had all these people misaligned into these groups. And they got two years into it, I believe. My numbers may be off a little bit on this. And they did this early analysis. And it looked like anybody who was taking hormones had a higher risk of dying and a higher risk of cardiovascular disease and neurologic stuff. And they're, oh my God, we got to stop this. Ethically, we got to stop it. And they put some press releases out and they went nuts. And they were all over the place that hormones cause cancer, cause early death and all this stuff. So everybody stopped taking them. Fast forward a couple of years later, the same group went into the data set because everybody was like, this can't be true. It contradicts everything. And ironically in Europe, they didn't even listen to it. Yeah. You know, the press release didn't met the and they just kept going. And when they reanalyzed all the data for cancer, for example, if you had estrogen treatment before, you were less likely to get cancer. And if you got cancer, you had a much higher survival rate of the cancer. Cardiovascular disease, you had higher survival rate. It was like all cause mortality. If you had hormones, any hormones, you live longer. And here they said exactly the opposite on all this stuff. So it generated all this fear. But there's a big push. I mean, even Oprah Winfrey is talking about it. And Katie Couric and a number of different people, Maria Shriver, they're all talking, you know, because their lives are saved. You know, you get into that. And I watch it all the time. I've been through it with so many different people. I was so many 45 to 55 year old women that work here. And I watch them go into that perimenopause to menopause and the vitality is going down, the focus is going down, the energy is going down, the libido is going down, the drive for everything is going down. And you bring that stuff up and normalize it. And it's like you get your life back again. 
that's why I have so much of a passion for this because it does so much for people to be on hormones. And I'm just so glad it is the time now to take the genie out of the box, throw away the Women's Health Initiative and move forward confidently. And the crazy thing is that God bless MDs and DOs that are practicing women's health. First of all, they get six hours on training on actual menopause. I don't know if the stat is any different now, but that's what it at least was. And so these are the physicians that are out in practice. And even recently, I was at a conference and I was with a woman who's an OBGYN who does a lot of the sexual health stuff. And I was talking to her a little bit about bioidentical hormone therapy. And she was like, the most protective thing a woman can be on is oral contraceptive pills. And I was like, I'm not going to go into this right now, but the mistruths that are being spread oh, are so horrible. great. And especially with leaders of people that are preaching on the podiums to other people. And so I would love to hear, because you know, you're so on with the fact that bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, there's so many different ways to slice it, but in a short way, what would you say bioidentical hormone replacement therapy is versus like what was used in the Women's Health Initiative? Some of those were bioidentical and some of them weren't, but the bioidentical versus the non-bioidentical, like the progesterones, these progestins. So progesterone, you know, what are you trying to do with it? Progesterone's trying to calm things down. It's anti-proliferative. Estrogen, like estradiol, makes things grow. And progesterone makes them differentiate, turn into different things. So cancer is when things grow, but they don't differentiate. And in your body, there's all these different ways to proliferate, but differentiate. So progesterone creates differentiation. It stabilizes the lining of the uterus, waiting for implantation. And then when you have your period, it drops down, everything comes out. It calms the brain. It creates an even keel, makes you sleep, makes you less irritable and more zen. So it does all these great things, but then the progestins, they would What's in the oral contraceptive pills? In the oral contraceptive pills, they would inhibit the lining from ever getting implanted, but they didn't interact with the rest of the receptor systems, correct? So they worked with the uterine lining, but they didn't work with the brain right to calm you down in the right way. They didn't work as an anti-proliferative against the estradiol effects. And not to demonize estradiol, we'll talk about that one too. Progesterone is supposed to do all these different things and hit all these different targets. It works with the PXR, the pregnant X receptor. It works to turn on different genes and it works together with NRF2, which is your detoxification gene set, gene trigger. And so it has all these different things that it does at a genomic level, at a receptor level, and it's distributed all through the body. But the progestins didn't do that. They only did one or two of the things. So while they're doing one thing, they're making you more at risk for certain cancers. They're making you less able to set a good neurotransmitter tone in the brain. So they made it do one thing real strong at the expense of the other things that it's supposed to do. So it becomes an imbalanced thing. Some of the estrogens that were out there became very carcinogenic. So these non-bioidentical synthetics were doing a lot of harm instead of just good. Yes. And when you get to something like Premarin, Premarin was estrogen isolated from horse urine. And while the estradiol in there is fine, uh, there was these things called equigens, equa for equus for horse. These are horse-based hormones that have no place in our body. We don't have any receptors for them. And because we're not supposed to have them, we don't have an effective system for detoxifying and moving them out of the body. So those would build up. So these things that weren't just pure bioidenticals had a lot of side effects to them that you don't get from the bioidenticals. Part horse forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Carol was looking at his studies like for years later, they were finding, you know, some of these horse hormones in there, you know, still running around. I mean, that's the thing that people also don't realize, like even with the Women's Health Initiative study having a positive effect, okay, take it and improve upon those hormones that we were giving people and look at what we're going to have as data 20 years from now. We're yeah. going to have these vital females running around, running the world. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And it's like with the Premarin, one of the things that estrogen does for you, estradiol, and we'll talk about the different estrogens. The ones we use are estriol and estradiol. Estradiol is the most potent one. But for brain health, long-term cognitive health, it's estradiol and estradiol alone. And the Premarin couldn't do that. You want to be running around, you want to be vibrant, you want to be sharp and on it. And estradiol is a big part of making that happen. Okay, so I think that this is another really important thing where people will miss the mark if they think, I cannot take hormone replacement therapy in any facet until I've been in menopause without my last menstrual cycle for two years or whatever. I think that this is this new space where women who are, I'll back up by saying this, there's a really amazing entrepreneur in the space Alex Hermosi. And he always says like, don't try to change the world. Like it is what it is. Like save your energy, find the solutions of the problems that we have going on. So we have all these toxins coming at us. We have microplastics. We have all these hormone disruptors. At an earlier and earlier age, we are experiencing hormone deficiencies. What are some of the good classic examples of women prior to menopause where hormones can be so relevant and really change their lives, not only yeah, so the time, but down the road. First, there's age gaps or age groups. There's two myths. One myth is I have to have totally cratered and hit the dark night of the hormonal soul before I take hormones. So that means, you know, you're fully in menopause. You, you stop cycling for whatever is six months or 12 months. The other is that once you've been in menopause for however many years, you can't take hormones. We've given hormones to 80 plus year olds and they're just like, oh my God, who turned the lights on? This is great. Then when you look at hormone decay for DHEA and testosterone, they're peaking in your mid 20s to 30s. And then there's just gradual, gradual decay. Do you want to wait till you're totally at the bottom before you start? Then you look at progesterone. There's this gradual decay. And you want to wait till you're at the bottom before you start? Estrogen is kind of on a slow decay. And then in perimenopause, it kind of swings up and down, which is a tricky one to deal with. And then it drops down finally. If these things are gradually declining, shouldn't you start on them earlier? And one of the things, let's just look first at progesterone. And the early ones to take on are DHEA and other androgens like testosterone and progesterone. Now, progesterone is going down heavily in your 40s. These days, some people are fully stopped cycling in their, in their mid to late 40s. It used to be mid to late 50s. Now it's mid to late 40s. That means they're in perimenopause during their 40s. And progesterone's going down fast, but estrogen's not going down as fast and it's swinging like this. So you go into a decade of relative estrogen excess. And relative estrogen excess leads you to be putting on more weight, to have a lot of neurological stuff where you have a lot more anxiety, a lot more irritability. And then when estrogen swinging up and down at the top, you're like manic, irritable, and anxious. And when it goes way down, you're kind of flat aspect and dull. So the buffer to all that is progesterone. Those effects of irritability and anxiousness come from estradiol affecting the glutamate receptor in the brain. 80% of your neurotransmission in the brain is a dance between glutamate, the yang thing, and GABA, the yin thing. The yang thing makes you on it, gives you memory, makes you focused and diligent, but with memory also comes memory and fear and danger and anxiety. So that's being hyperstimulated. And GABA, the other one is rest, digest, repair, regenerate, detoxify. It's sleep, it's calm, it's zen. And this is the one that's held up by progesterone. So when progesterone is low, your calm is low and your irritability is high. So if we start that early, we're going to bring a whole new level of stability, psycho-emotional stability into a time of perimenopause that is characterized by instability, anxiousness, and those kind of issues. Now, when the androgens are going down, DHEA is going down, especially if you're adrenally burned out, because most of that's made in the adrenals. It is an androgen. It gives you a stimulation and a focus, and that turns into testosterone, which gives you real drive, focus, libido. And so those are going down too. So when you supplement those and those come up, they bring you that sort of comfort in your body, like I'm supposed to be here. I know what I'm doing. 
the progesterone is giving you an even keel and countering that unstable estrogen that's going on. And that's early in perimenopause, you know, and that may be starting at 40. And then as you're swinging and the estrogen, as you get closer to peri to menopausal transition, you're going to bring on an estrogen called estriol. Estriol is a form of estrogen that has no effect on breast and proliferation and cancer. In fact, it's anti-proliferative, but it is the one that does all the pelvic floor strengthening. There's a receptor called the estrogen receptor beta that it's very strong for, and that's all through the urinary tract, the vaginal tract, because people start getting into chronic TBIs. They get into vaginal atrophy, which is vaginal dryness. It's thinning of the vaginal walls. It counters all of that. It's stopping prolapse. I mean, people have to put like meshes in to keep their abdominal wall up where it's supposed to be. So as trial goes in and starts countering all of that, buffering all of that, and then as estradiol goes away and you start getting hot flashes, then you add in estradiol as well. And then you've completed. So it's not like I wait and then I go on them all. It's a sequence of you coming into peri, in through menopause, and you're adding different things along the way until at the far end of it, when you're totally not cycling, you've got all of the hormone supplement. I love that. When you look at the picture of perimenopause and literally the picture of who it is, it affected me. And I think that when you look at all women who have gone through the postpartum period, yep. I don't know anyone who hasn't experienced that crash of progesterone. Yep. The ones who have the six week follow up that cop to their doctor that they are feeling these feelings, they're then prescribed an SSRI of sorts where, oh my gosh, if this OBGYN could have been a little bit more educated on like where we are now with the tools to help someone with something bioidentical and something replacing like with like, like why are we just yeah. mess brain chemistry when that's all they need it? The progesterone is skyrocketing during pregnancy and your body kind of adapts to these high levels and turns down the receptors a little bit. And then it crashes down. And the body's like, where did it all go? What's going on? And then you end up kind of flat and depressed and not only like the GABA and the stability, so you don't have emotional lability, that's what progesterone gives you, but it gives you a lot of serotonin activity as well. And the estrogen gives you the dopamine, the go. So that postpartum progesterone supplementation is totally underutilized and it can help so, so much. And then you're sleep deprived and you're going through all these things and then your libido is nothing. You have these new babies. It affects relationships. And then you're totally medically gaslit in terms of like, well, of course you're tired. Like you have a new baby. Like this is just a change. That's not even to mention the fact that you probably potentially came off of an oral contraceptive pill to get pregnant. Then your progesterone receptors are all screwed up from that one too. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes these girls have been on it for 20 years before they go to try to conceive. So it's such a huge issue. Then I think that there's another huge place, like look at the whole, and this is something that I've suffered from, look at the whole concept of interstitial cystitis and yeah. how that is something like, okay, we're putting stimulators into the bladder. We're giving people chronic antibiotics that's wrecking their gut. We are doing all of these things, all these different other nutraceuticals like d like trying, 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 ozone shots, like things that will help. But when what you created in the estriol, yeah, that product, I'm telling you, personally have used it. First of all, I love the clarity of it and the concept. Yeah. Of, we'll get into that too, like how it's formulated to be available. But I really think that you're onto something in terms of the cosmeceutical realm of yeah. people are going to start to incorporate this estriol into cosmetic products because yeah. I'm not going to lie. When I put my two pumps, I first put a yeah. little yeah. <laughs> under my yeah. eye. I put estriol on my face. Yes, it's thank really, you. really, really good. It's got great clinical data on it. And then we're coming out with a, another line where it's not just the estriol, but it's estriol and vitamin C, green tea extract, you know, another Ayurvedic plant. So it's like, well, let's really do it. Yeah. And the other application, I mean, you can put it anywhere, but vulval application, so more of it's where all those receptors are. Because there's atrophy of the whole tissues there when you get, you know, into the more advanced menopause. It's like bio-age reversal. It's like bio reversal. It just totally takes time back. And then you're filling in all those urinary tract receptors. That's half of the battle there is to get that urinary tract back on and get the barrier in there strong so you're not having all these chronic infections. 
the crazy thing is when I look at what the basis of what we've done up until this point with our business, it's been medical aesthetics and I focus on the prevention end. And it used to be that women would like be like, I would never do Botox. I would never do filler. I would never do all these things. But then they come to you and they're like, what can I do now? And it's like, because yeah. now. now really you need like a facelift surgically if that's yeah. go down that route. So when we look at, again, the genital urinary system and the cosmetics of the external, it's like the neck. No one thinks about their neck until they start to see yeah. that the neck is aging. Yeah. We can get people to put products on it now to prevent yeah. Build up back home. going to prevent. What's the biggest symptom of, well, not the biggest, but the most obvious symptom of low progesterone over time is thin skin. You yeah. look at these really elderly women, and some of them, it looks like you can see through their skin. You know, I was like, is that your teeth back there? Very, yeah. very thin. You get these lines and stuff, and the whole thing's collapsing. But the estrogen's keeping the plumping going, and it's keeping the fibroblast making elastin and collagen and keeping that all alive. That's trial for like, Vaginal atrophy, vaginal dryness, uh, yeah, two days, three days, you're there. But then over the next several months, there's a whole restructuring and thickening and reversing of age. Mm -hmm. It's something that we've definitely started to incorporate with our, we do the O-shot procedure where we're injecting PR into the clitoris and the G-spot. And why wouldn't you, it's like going to the dentist and getting your teeth cleaned, but not flossing and brushing at home. Like the estriol is your flossing and brushing at home. Oh, it's just awesome. And as they get a little older, switch them over to bias. They'll have a little bit of both going on. It's just amazing. And the older hormone doctors have been doing this so long that have picked it up, have all their women on it. And everybody's yeah. super psyched. Okay. Let's talk about now. I think that we've made the point that there's definitely a place for people. I'm 40, about to be 41, and I am utilizing these products. <laughs> I was like, Perimenopause, aren't you like 32? And I'm like, no, you're 40. Oh, doing good. Yes. You know, I like to combine all of it. I like to look good on the outside, but also feel good on the inside. And I am so glad that I found this, you know, in my late 30s and that I can transition through this 40s to 50s step with a lot more ease. And I want more women to be able to experience that. And I want more providers to have the confidence that it's not the overwhelming concept that we think that it may be. And it's not something that's opening us up to all this litigation. And I think OBGYNs are really afraid because of that. They just have a background of having to carry a lot of malpractice when this is something you add to that because you're making people happy and you're changing lives. But if we transition into menopause, then let's talk about, like you said, never giving estradiol a bad rep. Estradiol. So as I understand, we have estrone, estradiol, and estriol in yeah. our body. Those are yeah. all three human estrogen forms. And we majorly focus on, like we just talked about, the benefits of estriol. But let's dive into estradiol. Obviously, yeah. we wouldn't really be giving someone this until they're in full bone menopause. There's cases where you would earlier. And this is just sort of the safest, easiest route is you wait until they're flashing and you bring it back up. But some people need it earlier. And you'll see, it'll be like thin skin and thin structure, not plump and full. You're going to start that a little bit earlier and you can do some testing, see where they are. But in this generalist mode, we wait until that crashes out because it's swinging a lot during the perimenopause period. So what does it do that estriol does not do? The cardiovascular, big cardiovascular protection from estrogen. The neurological big neurological protection from estrogen, specifically estradiol, and bone loss. So it's keeping you out of osteoporosis. So those are huge, huge things. And then systemically, it's doing all the things, you know, it hits all the same receptors that estriol does, but estriol only, well, let me just lay it out there. There's estrogen receptor alpha and estrogen receptor beta. The betas are big in the lower half, and trial is strong on them, but not strong on alpha. Estradiol is strong on both. That's why estradiol doesn't work on any of the proliferation that estrogen receptor alpha does. And this is where people worry about cancer because the alpha is more proliferative. But then if the progesterone's balanced with it, it's anti-proliferative and controlling and, you know, it's getting things to differentiate. And the beta is controlling it too. So the estradiol is controlling it. Where you get into problems is all the endocrine disruptors You know, these things like atrazine and these pesticides and herbicides that are out in the environment 
and uh, PCBs, those are the chlorinated and brominated things, flame retardants, they are estrogen receptor alpha agonists and they stick to it and stick to it. And so detoxification of these bad environmental hormone-like products that we call endocrine disrupting chemicals, getting those out of the system is as important as filling in the good hormones. And so, yeah, again, as we get there and they start flashing, we start putting in more estradiol or we'll measure them and we'll say your ambient serum estradiol is below 20. Well, let's get that up. That's how we approach the dial. Oh, and what does it do beyond those things? It makes you cheery. I did a pharmacokinetic study of our estrogen cream. So I like rubbed it all into my thighs so we could measure my serum. And Carol says, see if it makes you cheery. It's like 20 minutes later, I'm like, hi. Well, that, okay, that's the crazy thing is how fast these work. So oh, yeah. talking about, I definitely have people and patients that are like, this is a lot of pumps to put on my vulvar area. And I'm like, enjoy it. Like just spread and it around. Like spread around and go up into the thighs and you can yeah. go up in the belly. Just get it all around. And so they'll be like, can I just take an oral or whatever? What about pellets? The beauty to me with these hormones, and I'm not against pellets. I'm not against mm-hmm. other forms and having everything be able, like there's choices, right? But for me, I just love the fact that I'm on also DHEA plus, which I would love to yep. talk about. Yeah. And I'll tell you why, but the bioavailability of that instantly and like that day you get to experience the benefits and then you yeah. don't like it, tomorrow don't take it. And it's like basically out of your system. Yeah, I, that's a beauty. They're in, they're out. I got my hormones tested at the turn of the year, probably like October. And to no shock to me, my testosterone was actually zero and my free testosterone was less than 0.3. So it validated a lot of the symptoms I was having. And I went on the testosterone injections, very small dose for women, the DHEA plus. And then I was also doing the advanced push catch system, which I do want to retouch on that. I think that anyone who's starting any sort of hormone replacement therapy would massively benefit from getting. Oh, yeah. So when I retested at six weeks, my testosterone was in the 300s because. I didn't need the testosterone sipping. You don't need the sipping aid when you're on the plus. I was exactly, I'm like, she's probably running 300. You're like, she's like building muscle, probably like my libido's through the roof. But for the first time, I actually felt like, oh my gosh, this is probably how my husband feels, you know? Like, we do experience that for the first time. Oh, yeah. I've heard that from her. Power of the DHEA. And can we talk about DHEA a little bit? I know like we know the map really well, but why is that so powerful as like even a first step of a perimenopausal person? Yeah, because DHEA production is driven by your adrenals. And so when your adrenals are down, it goes down, but it becomes all the other sex hormones. So it's a cascade. It goes from DHEA to androstenedione to testosterone to estradiol or to estrone and some of the DHT. So all these different androgens are formed and then all the estrogens are formed from DHEA. So it's the source for all these other hormones. And so in this nanoparticle, it goes in unmetabolized. Like a capsule has to go through your gut, go up to the liver, and it makes all these metabolites. It breaks down a lot of the DHEA and it turns it into a sulfated version, which is very slow to turn into the other forms like the testosterone. So these nanoparticles go right into the blood. They don't hit the liver. And see, a lot of people are worried about higher DHEA doses because they get acne and hair loss or hair growth, all these high androgen symptoms that I think are from metabolites made in the liver. Whereas here, your DHEA goes up very quickly and you feel an energy surge. It helps your metabolism, helps with lean muscle mass, and it quickly becomes testosterone. So you go up into these very high DHEA levels, a little above reference range, which is no problem at all. And your testosterone is up at the higher ends of the reference ranges. And that brings up your sense of self, your sense of drive, your sense of wanting to get out and engage and your confidence there. It's mental, it's physical, it's muscle, it's sex. It's like all that stuff. It just puts you back on the playing field. It's so crazy. And I will tell you, if someone's going to break out or have a pimple or acne from anything, it's me. So when I started the DHEA, I was a little nervous that that would happen. And that absolutely did not happen. 
And I think that it's important too, you know, there's DHEA, but then there's the DHEA plus that you so elegantly formulated. Not only does it have the hormones, it also has the nutraceuticals and adaptogens. So for people that maybe have heard whatever about DHEA, what's the purpose of those two other things? Yeah. So we have just a pure DHEA low dose because a lot of the doctors are afraid to go into this high dose that we use. But the DHEA plus, I definitely push people there. It's got DHEA plus pregnenolone. And pregnenolone is food for all the adrenal hormones. And it's a neurosteroid. It brings focus and it brings down inflammation of the brain. Wonderful addition. And it's an aromatase inhibitor. And that's going to keep us from making too much estrogen from the DHEA plus. So you got pregnenolone and DHEA as your hormones. Then you have two nutraceuticals, DIM, diendolyl methane. That keeps the estrogen metabolites into these safer forms, these 16 hydroxyesterones into the 2-hydroxy. So it's helping your estrogen metabolism. And chrysin, which is also an aromatase inhibitor, it's inhibiting too much estrogen formation from the testosterone. And then there's three Mac Daddy adaptogens. Adaptogens are old Chinese and Ayurvedic hormones. Some of these are South American, not hormones. They're plants that have been used for thousands of years that help adapt you to stress. And their chemical structure is very similar to hormones. And so it works with the hormones and the hormone receptors and smooths them all out, manages cortisol, gives you adrenal strength. And the ones that we use there are a fermented Korean ginseng, Dong Kwai, which is the Chinese female ginseng, and maca root, which is a South American root that was used in hormone therapies forever. So you have these whole plant extracts massaging the whole thing and keeping it harmonious. Then you have metabolism modulators, and then you have those main hormones. And that stuff is just amazing. It just turns the lights on, gives you energy really quickly. And you can start in your 30s with just like a small dose and work your way up as you get older, work up the dosing. I love that. I also love stumbling upon the DHEA plus with this line because when I first trained on hormones with an amazing functional medicine doctor who created a whole portal to like spread the word, we were going over patients together and one of my patients was on DHEA. She's like, well, I don't love that because you can't predict which line it goes down, like whether it's making estrogen, making testosterone. Like, so I love the fact that like driving home that the DHEA plus, you can watch which paths it goes down. And with the addition of the chrysin and the dim, we're able to keep that at bay. We have a 20 person study where we watched everything. And made almost no estrogen. They made tons of testosterone and other androgens and didn't make the estrogen. So here's the deal with the estrogen. We want to control how much estrogen you have with the topical estrogens. We want the DHA plus to just do the androgens. And androgen is all the male hormones, including testosterone and DHT. And then control separately your estrogens with the topicals. Yes, I love, love, love that let's talk a little bit about the oral stuff that you've created. So until now, like even some of the podcasts I listened to you speak on a year and a half ago, maybe, maybe it was longer. We didn't have an oral testosterone supplement. And there's obviously limitations to people wanting to give themselves shots, not wanting to have pellets, the sublingual with some limitations with that. Who is this new oral testosterone for? Yeah, so it's a sublingual nano emulsion. I mean, there's some sublinguals out there, but they don't absorb it all. Say you're like 200 hypogonadal, you do 12 milligrams and you run up to like 2,500 to 3,000 in 30 minutes. And then over the next couple hours, it goes back down to baseline. So it goes in, hits all the androgen receptors, activates all that activity. And then it goes away so that it doesn't create testicular atrophy. So especially... Younger men who need more androgens going, maybe they've had TBIs or just the environmental toxicities bringing down their testosterone, but they don't want testosterone injections and pellets act as contraceptives. They are a negative feedback loop on the testicles and the testicles actually shrink and stop making sperm. And so with this once a day big dose that then goes away, it doesn't inhibit that. Everything keeps going like that. So it's a great way. Now, we don't sell that. That has to be compounded. So they'll go through a practitioner like you. They'll get a script for it. And that'll go out to a compounding pharmacy like College Pharmacy in Colorado. 
We actually were so lucky. One of the local compounding pharmacies, we now have the third with you guys in the country because they were willing to bring on the technology. Oh, great. Great. Which is good for them. Now they have the benefit of being able to yep. house that. Can you use that same liposomal technology that you're using with the oral testosterone for progesterone? Yeah, progesterone, estradiol, estriol, all of them, you can do it. We have that topicals because under cosmetic laws, there's a certain amount that you can put in cosmetics. Now, when you look at a cream versus like a progesterone cream versus these nano serums, you'll see our nano serums, like you mentioned before, are transparent. The creams are white. And if you put them under a microscope, you see all these chunks of hormone in there. And that's why they have to put so much in. You can't read it in the serum at all. And that's why they need to micronize the hormone. They have the hormone suspended in this cream base and some of the hormone dissolves into it and you rub it in and you're left with a lot of powdered hormone just sticking on the outside of the skin. The nano serums, everything is completely dissolved into these nanoparticles and when you rub it on, they penetrate super, super well. So we were able to do these nano serums under cosmetic laws, but if you want to do oral and get even higher blood levels, then you need to get compounded progesterone in our format that we license to the compounding facilities or the estrogens that way too. Love that. That does bring up the last couple of points I have. I think transference is a huge issue with a lot of these creams. How long after you apply one of these creams would you not worry about transferring it to another human? Yeah, if you're using one of the traditional creams, I don't know how long. I mean, that's you know hours and hours and hours. I mean, pretty much have to wash the residue off. With ours, as soon as it's all absorbed, you're good. That's incredible. Okay, so one more thing I want to talk about the adaptogens. Everyone's so onto these buzzwords about the hallmarks of aging and telomere lengthening. And the Japanese ginseng is like a telomere lengthener, right? There's some data on ginseng's lengthening telomeres, but I don't think it's been all that significant, like a big one. But the cool thing is, is that When you go to these longevity clinics, right, and you're trying to figure out where do I start? Do I start with medical weight loss? Do I start with hormones? Do I start with a gut and liver detox? The right practices are going to be able to marry all of them and get you Uh, for your buck, which maybe our supplements are a little bit higher cost, but they're going to be able to do what they say they're going to do and get you there very quickly. And You're going to move the needle really fast like a two to three month protocol, do what other ones take 12 months to do. And who wants to sit there a 12 month detox? You know, it's just like way too long. And so detoxification is crucial. And the way we build it, it's not just stripping. We're hitting a lot of these aging triggers, the NRF2, AMPK, sirtuins. We're getting all those. In fact, we did a three month detox. We're able to reverse biological age by an average of a year. One guy was an eight-year reversal on his biological age, you know, methylation-based age. So those are huge go-tos. And then adaptogens, one of the reasons they're so good, I mean, yeah, they control adrenals and they control receptors that are in the system. So testosterone effect on a body is a mixture of the level of the testosterone in the blood and the density, how many hormone receptors are there and how active they are. And so detoxification is taking environmental chemicals off the receptors and adaptogens are making more receptors for you. So you can, even at the same testosterone level, you can be more androgenic. And so both have to happen. I mean, how many men do you see who are in their 60s and their testosterone six or 700, but they have total muscle wasting And they're just like, that's because there's no receptors there. Absolutely. Obviously, this is a new launch. Is there any interworkings or anything you want to share about what's coming with the Quicksilver Scientific line? Well, we have this new line that's a little bit more for your consumer with a facial beauty and a vaginal beauty, has the core DHEA, and it'll have the piece progesterone. And so those will be coming out. Those do really well in the spas too, because it's so like, you use it for this. And they're real pretty and stuff. And so that's what we have going on in the hormone line. We will come out with rheumatase inhibitors for the male side since we can't do the testosterone. And DHA doesn't turn into testosterone for men. It only does that for women. It's like a forbidden path, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. So we'll be working on rheumatase inhibitors, probably some prostate formulas there. 
And then in the main line, we have a whole immune series coming out, mm-hmm. Lyme products, late viral products, and those will be real big for us. That's super exciting. The line is so robust. I even think about like every single product I've had really had to study. One last one I kind of want to hit on is the AMPK charge. When you have all these, I'm glad people, you said that. You have all these people on the G agonist, oh, or, yeah. Mormon, or any of these things, and like great, use whatever we need to use to get to these goals and minimize all these other comorbidities. But can you just quickly break down yeah. this amazing product because this is one yeah. that. Was like everyone needs to have this. It's a freaking home run product. It's a couple of herbs that people use. Berberine is used for a number of different things: resveratrol, quercetin, silymarin, dim, and cinnamon. So all of these are AMPK activators. AMPK is what's activated when you fast or when you keto, carb restrict. It makes you burn fat and turn it into ketones, and it makes your blood sugar regulation much more efficient too. And so, just on a simple level. If you have a high A1C, if your postprandial glucose goes up to 180 or 200, it'll bring that down to like 140, 150, or A1C will come down a couple of points. You'll burn fat. You'll have much more energy. You're making ketones for your brain. This will put you into ketosis in 30 to 60 minutes, you know, depending upon who you are. You might need one or two doses. And so it's great long term cardiometabolic. But now, say you're taking Ozempic or Tazepatide or the semiglutide, tazepatide, the new one, I forget, the retributide. All those GLP-1 agonists are very strong, but they slow everything down and they almost stop bioflow out of your liver through your gallbladder. And so that's slowing digestion, slowing emptying time. So you don't want to eat. It's slowing pancreatic digestive enzymes coming out. People can get pancreatitis. They can get all kinds of gallbladder issues and cholestasis. The key is not to go for a high dose of that to drive, you know, the weight loss. Go for as low a dose as you can, because then you'll minimize all of these other symptoms. And I do believe in the GLP-1 agonist really good. So a low dose and then use bitters to keep the gallbladder flowing and add in the AMPK charge with that. And then you'll do the ketone minerals and the ultravitamin. So you're getting all the nutrients. But the AMPK will drive more of that lipophagy, burning the fat up and having cardiometabolic wellness while you're getting that main drive out of the GLP-1. Yes. And that is the, not to go from hormones to medical weight loss, but they are one in the same. And that is the thing. I love GLP-1 agonists. They're an incredible tool done well. Even if done well, they really shouldn't have any side effects. But you talking about pairing that ultravitamin, the AMPK yeah. charge, the Bitters, acts, yeah. Those are going to take someone and give them mediocre, like, yes, you don't have food noise anymore, but like optimize your health. And that's yeah. exciting. You'll feel great. And all the women that I got on hormones here at Quicksilver, they all became AMPK charge junkies because women, intermittent fasting is difficult. You have to do it with your cycle. But when you stop cycling, it makes it a lot easier. And when you take this, your hunger goes away immediately. Because you just start making energy, you mobilize glycogen, you mobilize fats as ketones, and you're helping burn off fat. In fact, I had a guy come here and lose 20 pounds in two months just taking an AMPK charge. It's a great one with the hormone system. It's a great one with intermittent fasting. It's a great one with weight loss. That's incredible. By the way, we have Thrivagen junkies at our office. Yeah. And I found this. So obviously, Thrivagen, we're junkies. But the biggest complaint I have about anything with Quicksilver Scientific with my patients is that the DHEA plus taste is bad. So here's my hack. I put pumps of my Thrivagen and two pumps of the glutathione mint, and it takes it right away. Yeah. So we have one coming out where we actually solve the flavor problem. (gasps) Oh, our patients will be so Oh, it just, that consumer one, it'll be a lower dose. It'll be 25 milligrams. The main one now, we're probably going to pull down to 50. A lot of people only need a half dose. Yeah. And once it's 50, we can mask the flavor completely. That's amazing. Okay, they'll be so happy. That is a really good, I think, way to end this. Other yeah. than, obviously, I want my patients to know that this is easy. This is safe. This is going to not only, like, you don't have to suffer through just the menopause cloud symptoms and then get through it. Like, this is going to offer longevity to our lives and change the trajectory of how we live. But also, I just want other providers to know how to become a provider with Quicksilver, a hormone provider, 
Can you talk a little bit about Yeah, the, yeah. Just go to quicksilverscientific.com. If you're a provider at all, get an account with us. Yeah. Because once you log in under your provider credentials, you go to the pro dashboard. And we have all of our webinars in there, all that education. Then we have two learning management system modules. One will take you through toxins, detox, how to do everything there. And the other one is a hormone module, teach you all about the basic hormones, how to use them, what to look for with symptoms, how to dose. And so we have so much information in there. And you can apply for a practitioner account online there. Or you can call a customer service and they'll walk you through it. Yes. I will say that on my dashboard, I have an e-learning tab on my bookmarks and yeah. Quicksilver Scientific e-learning is one of those. And I, on my little walking iPad, you should see me re-watching them all the time. They're gold. So thank you so much. You're and so welcome. You. I'm so glad you enjoy. Thank you for being here. And I am so happy to hear that you're going back to the aesthetic conference to continue to encourage more of us providers to be able to offer this easy care to our patients. Yeah, absolutely. And they're really receptive to beauty from within. Detoxification clears your skin up like gold. Yeah, I can definitely attest to that as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I will leave every information in the show notes in terms of getting in touch with this incredible company and what's next. And that's a wrap on another enriching episode of the Curated Beauty Podcast. If today's conversations resonated with you, I urge you to share it with someone you believe could benefit from it. Let's spread the beauty, knowledge, and empowerment far and wide. For more in-depth resources, information about who we are, or if you're interested in becoming a patient or training directly with me or one of my team, visit our website at beautyculturespa.com. Don't forget to stay connected with us on Instagram for all the latest updates behind the scenes and beauty wisdom. Follow us at beautyculture.medspa and at B Cultured Wellness. That's the letter B Cultured Wellness. Thank you for being with us today. Keep curating your beauty both inside and out. Until next time.